Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a hobbycraft artisan and artist. In this video, we're going to take everything that we've learned in the previous episodes of this series in order to draw a gorgeous still life of various fruits. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the Hobbycraft channel and click the bell icon to be notified of new content. You will need heavy cartridge paper, a set of pencils, I'm using Faber-Castell's 12-piece graphite pencil set, a putty eraser and a normal eraser, blending stumps, and a pencil sharpener. Look at your subjects and draw light outlines of all of the different fruits using an HB pencil, paying careful attention to the proportions and how they all sit together. Using your pencil can be key to helping you measure the different proportions of the fruit. Compare the sizes, heights and widths in order to make sure you're drawing the fruit accurately. Use your 4B pencil to begin shading the cast shadows, making sure to shade the shadows horizontally. This will make sure the subjects look like they're sitting on top of the table. Once you've added in your cast shadows, use your finger or a blending stump to give the fruit a mid-tone. This helps get a nice base on your subjects of your piece and also helps them stand out from the white paper. Use an HB pencil to start with the grapes on the left and map out the dark and light areas using the circular shading technique. Make sure you pay close attention to where these highlights and shadows fall. Switch to a 2B pencil to darken the shading on the grapes. Pay attention to the texture and any patterns that there are on the subject. Continue to use this circular shading to make sure the grapes are nice and smooth as they should be. Continue to build out the values of the grapes using gradually darker pencils, 4B, 6B, to establish the darkest darks in the grapes.
For the pear, this is a much lighter object than the grapes. It is also essentially two spheres on top of each other, so keep this in mind about where the light falls and how the shadow drops off it. Continue to do circular shading with the HB pencil, applying light pressure. You can then use your finger or a blending stump to blend this shading, keeping the highlight in the center, as this is where the light naturally hits the pair. Go in with a 2B pencil to begin defining the stalk. Like an apple stalk, it's sort of like a small twig and has a rough texture to it. Use harder lines and pay attention to this texture. Where the fruit interacts and crosses over each other, remember to define the shadows to give a good contrast and definition between subjects. Continue to layer up the car shadows to make sure the shapes are defined properly. Top tip. Try and shade large areas first before adding detail to make sure you establish the correct values and ensure the subject isn't too dark or light. Begin to map out the detail on the pair, looking at the object to make sure everything is in the right place. When drawing the detail, shade the detail rather than outlining and filling it in. This will help it to look more natural and make it feel like it's more part of the pair. Use a putty rubber to lift off a small amount of pencil on the highlighted areas. The pair is now complete. Use the same techniques and methods as you've used for the grapes and pear to map out the dark and light areas on the nectarine and the apple. Pay attention to the relative shades of the fruit. For example, the nectarine should be the darkest object on the page, so build the layers with this in mind. To see a full tutorial on how to draw an apple, check out the previous video in the series linked in this video's description.
when working on the strawberry, I'm starting in the same way with an HB pencil and shading around any extreme highlights. You can then use a blending stump to more precisely blend this in. Top tip, you can make highlights bigger at first and then shade into them to make it more realistic. Next, you want to plot in where the seeds are on the strawberry, making sure they curve around it to enhance the 3D nature of the object and also make sure they're not too much of a uniform order. Once the seeds are drawn in, you can now start shading around them. Some of these will have small highlights around them, so keep this in mind. Keep looking at your reference image or object to make sure everything is in the right place. Once the base layer is in on the strawberry, you can now start looking at the stalks and leaves. I've switched to a 2B pencil for this. This should be slightly darker than the strawberry, but if in doubt, you can always check the values by taking a picture and putting it into black and white. Still using the 2B pencil, enhance the shadow and continue layering the dark areas. Then you can add more detail to the strawberry around some of the seeds. Checking your reference is even more important at this stage as the light bounces off some seeds differently to others. You can then switch to a 2B pencil or 6B pencil and continue to really darken these areas. Use your putty eraser and mould it into a very small point in order to lift off the highlights on the strawberry.
finishing touches and to add a sense of space, use a light pencil such as an HB or even a 2H pencil and shade the surface the fruit is sat on, thinking about the texture. For example, these fruits are on a wooden chopping board, so I wanted to give that sort of wooden grain feel to it. Take your putty eraser and mould it into a flat edge. Use this edge to create highlighted lines on the texture you just shaded. Go to hobbycraft.co.uk to book a workshop find your next craft project or learn a new skill. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and we'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. Please join us again for more videos.